Hello there. Welcome to another Home Automator tutorial. We've made it to part two. Firstly, I want to have a quick shout out to Miguel or Miguel, who bought me coffee and left a great message for me. This encourages me greatly and the money will be well spent towards improving my videos. I'm truly grateful to you. The coffee was a really nice surprise. If you want to support the channel, you are welcome to buy me a coffee as well. The description is in the link below. Today's video will discuss a bit about I2C and will add an ambient light sensor. Part one of this Let's Build a Room sensor is linked in the card above and in the description below. this tutorial, we should talk about what is an ambient light sensor and why we would want one. Firstly, to prevent automated lights to come on when there is enough ambient light around or vice versa. This would allow us to save energy. We can also use it to automate brightness levels on the screen, depending on the ambient light. So if the ambient light is lower, we can actually lower the screen brightness. And if the ambient light is higher, we can raise the brightness of the screen. We can also use it to detect day and night, to control external lights or start the infrared on our security cameras. An unusual use for it would also be to control our plants artificial light, allowing us to grow those plants in a better manner. Lastly, it can also be used to show us outside ambient light. And using this, we can deduce certain things like cloud cover. Now, this is not a exhaustive list. However, it gives us a good idea why we want to use such a sensor. Before starting this project, if you have not seen my previous tutorials on setting up in an ESP Home device, I would greatly advise you to go and check that one first before you do this one. Link in the card above, link in the description below. A few reminders. If you want to follow this tutorial with me, all the code is on my GitHub page. The link is in the description below. In fact, all the code on this channel is going to be published there. Also, I know that your time is valuable. If you want to skip to the meaty stuff, the tutorial has chapters which you can access on the video timeline or in the description below. If you like this tutorial, please like, subscribe, smash that notification icon and share so that others can see it as well. And this will enable the YouTube algorithm to present this tutorial to more people. For today's tutorial, if you have followed my previous tutorials, all we will need additionally a BH1750 I2C ambient light sensor module. I will leave some links in uh, my GitHub so that you can go and buy one should you need to. The required software, as per my previous tutorial, are Home Assistant, and I will include a link up above, and ESP Home, which I will also leave a link up above and in the description below. As I said earlier, I want to talk a little bit about I2C and its advantages.
Now, I2C stands for Enter Integrated Circuits. It is a communication protocol that only uses two wires. CSL for the clock signal, SDA for data. Its simplicity makes it ideal for connecting low-speed peripheral devices over a short distance, within 30-ish centimeters. It is also very cost-effective, so it makes it a popular choice for various applications and from various manufacturers. I2C allows to connect multiple peripheral devices as slaves to a single master, such as the ESP32. This flexibility enables efficient communication between various sensors, displays, and other external devices. The ESP32's I2C interface supports both 7 and 10 bit addressing. With dual addressing, you can communicate with more devices. The ESP32 I2C interface supports different communication speeds in between 100 kilobits and 400 kilobits. The ESP32 can operate as either an I2C master or a slave. We will compare I2C, SPI, and UART in a future video. I2C on the ESP32S. There are two I2C bus interfaces on most ESP32s. Both bus interfaces can be either a master or a slave. The standard ports are GPIO21 for SDA and GPIO22 for SCL. You can use almost any of the GPIO pins. However, I have chosen those two because those two are two standard pins. Now let's talk about the BH1750 16-bit ambient light sensor that communicates via the I2C protocol. It provides accurate measurements of ambient light levels, outputting luminosity readings in lux. The sensor can measure a minimum of 1 lux and go all the way up to 65,535 lux. The pinouts include the following. VCC, which can be powered by either 3.3 or 5 volts. Ground, which is a common ground. CSL, which is a I2C clock pin. SDA, which is the I2C data pin and it has a selector for the address. Now, we're not gonna use the selector for the address today. However, it could be useful if that address is already used by another device that cannot change its address. It is also worth noting that the BH1750 sensors supports two measurement modes, continuous and one-time, but we will not be using the one-time mode at all. So. Let's move on to putting it all together. As last time, I have prepared the breadboard so that I can show you how to put it together. As shown in the diagram, this in orange is my pin for CSL and this in yellow is my pin for SDA, which come here and show as yellow SDA and orange CSL. The connection is made in between. This is the only data connection that will be coming from the ESP32 to the BH1750. We will also take the ground, the common, the common ground from the common ground rail and put it into this position and the VCC five volts in this case, into the first position. Tip, always check the power requirement for a sensor. Mine is five volt tolerant, yours might not be. Let's move on to the code. And here's a code which you will recognize from our previous tutorials. I've done some changes. 
And let me show them to you right away. If we go down over here, you will see that the Bluetooth low energy tracker hub has been commented out and that the web server is now active. This is for me to be able to see that everything is working using the web server before we move to Home Assistant. Because I2C is a communications protocol and a means of communication like Bluetooth is, like Wi-Fi is, I am going to paste it in the same area. And being a stickler for standards, I am going to clean this up. You will see that we are indeed using GPIO 21 for SDA and GPIO 22 for SCL, as shown in the diagram. Scan is equal to true. Now, this is relatively important at this time to make sure that we are seeing the device that we are looking for. In this case, obviously, this would be the ambient light sensor. Next, we've got ID. ID is not necessary when we only have one bus. However, I wanted to show you how we differentiate one bus from another. So you can see here, I've actually called it the device internal name, underscore I2C underscore bus underscore one. So this is bus one. Now that this is done, we can move on to the next step, deploying this code to ensure that we can see the BH1750 at address 0x23. The steps to do this are click install wirelessly because we have already primed the device in our previous tutorial and it's going to take a while for it to actually build. So I'll see you when it's finished. A few moments later. Now the upload is nearly ready. There we are. The OTA was successful and we are now waiting for the ESP to respond. And there we are. And as you can see, it found the device at address 0x23, which is exactly where we thought it was going to be. Okay, so let's move on to the next part of this. We are going to go down into sensors and uh, we are going to go past the DHT22. Again, we are going to do some space. And I have the code for you ready. And let's paste it. It is very simple. And I'm going to go through it with you now. Platform is BH1750. Name, Illuminance. You could practically name it anything you want. The ID, as usual, the device internal name with underscore Illuminance. The address, very important, is 0x23. And the update interval is 30 seconds. It is the same then at the top of the file. I am going to save this. And I am going to again reinstall wirelessly. And off it goes. And we have an error. OK. These things happen. Not often. I see the problem. Have a good look. The indentation is incorrect. And that's all it takes. So we're going to correct the indentation and we're going to save again, install wirelessly, and I will see you on the other side of this. A few moments later. And here we are uploading. It will be relatively fast. And we will see if we are receiving data from it in a second. We are waiting for the ESP to reboot. And here we are, waiting for data to be sent, illuminance, and we have a state of 293 lux. We're not getting temperature. Ah, there we are. Temperature is 24 degrees and humidity is at 22%. Now it's time to move on to Home Assistant and see if it's available over there. Before we carry on any further, 
there is one thing that I would like to do and to check if our web server works. We will go to 192.168.0.226 is the where we were. So the user is admin and the uh, password. We can see that uh, we are connected to an SSID called VR9-IoT. We are running ESP on version 24.2.2. .2. Humidity is at 22%. Our IP address is over there. Our illuminance is at 308.2 lux. I'm going to skip the rest. Our temperature is at 24 degrees. Interesting fact is that our Wi-Fi signal sensor is at minus 50 dBm, which is excellent. I will touch on that uh, much later in these tutorials when we introduce a screen where I will do a Wi-Fi strength graphically with bars. Okay, let's move away from this. We know it works. Here we are in Home Assistant. And the first thing that we are going to do is scroll all the way down to Settings, Device and Services. We are going to find our ESP Home. There is only one device. And guess what? Luminance is here. So we now have Luminance available to us. We're going to add it to the dashboard. Add to dashboard. And we are going to go straight to the dashboard. And here it is. I'm not going to go through showing you how to do bar graphs and so forth. I do not think that's necessary at this point in time. We will have a series which will be dedicated to, to Home Assistant and dashboards at the later stage. So, comes to an end this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will be talking about adding one of these fellows, the SGP30, which gives us both TVOC and ECO2. And it is another I2C device. So, we will bridge from the current I2C device to this one. And uh, yes. I hope you liked it. If so, please like, subscribe, smash that notification button so that you never miss a video. And please share this video with others. This was Pascal Parent signing off and see you in the next tutorial.